And I was like, let's make that vegan, okay? How do you do this? The hell with the mother? Ooh, look at that. <sighs> And welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. So today, as you can see, yes, you are looking at another Squid Game themed video because like the rest of the world, I am obsessed with Squid Game. Okay, I'm on my second watch and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna watch it another time. I wanted to do a video where I veganize recipes and the different foods that they feature on Squid Game because I thought that would be super fun. And of course, I have to try that honeycomb thing. I haven't tried it yet guys, so you can try it with me, okay? Anyways, if there's any sort of like actual recipes, I will have a blog post with ingredients and all that stuff as usual, link down below. And if you haven't watched Squid Game yet, then you should definitely watch it. I don't think I'll say any spoilers. I mean, I can't promise anything. At this point guys, if you haven't watched it, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to just deal with the spoilers, okay? That is your fault. <laughs> yeah, let's just get on and make some different foods from Squid Game. All right, you guys, so the first thing I wanna try making is the lunchbox that they eat in the middle of one of the games. I can't remember, okay? But they basically have this very old school Korean style lunchbox, which is like this tin box here. Okay, I actually happen to have one already. And these are actually very common in Korea. It's very old school. It's a very kind of traditional sort of Korean lunch. So there's like rice, there's like little banchan, which is like side dishes. And they also have like a fried egg on top. Now, of course, we're veganizing it. So I wanna try veganizing the fried egg. Very exciting, I know. First thing though, I also wanna to try to make one of the side dishes that's shown in the uh, show, which is braised black beans, okay? Or like sweetened black beans. It's a very common side dish in Korea. So I have here some soaked black beans. So I actually soaked these overnight. So these are Korean black beans, okay? I feel like I don't know. I feel like there's a difference. Okay, I, I made my mom give me like some of her black beans. I tried to buy them at the Korean store, but they were really expensive and I was like, I don't want to spend it, the money, okay? So Korean black beans. You could probably do this with other black beans, but Korean moms will say no. Anyways, so I have it soaked. I'm going to drain the water. I'm going to rinse this out and then we're going to put it in here with some new water and let it come to a boil. Okay, let's go. Fill this with water. All right, guys, so now, oh, water. We're gonna bring this to a boil with the black beans that have been soaking. You wanna soak them for like, I don't know, at least eight to 12 hours, I think. So overnight, my friends, overnight. Once it comes to a boil, we're gonna turn it down and let it simmer. So after this comes to a boil, you're gonna see a bit of white foam just come to the top. So you might wanna just scoop some of it out with a spoon. Now you don't have to do this, but um, I mean, it's not that difficult. So you might as well, okay? So once this came to a boil, I just turned the heat down to a medium or a medium low. And then I added in a quarter cup and one tablespoon of soy sauce and a quarter cup of brown sugar. And by the way, I used one cup of dry black beans. So once you add the sugar and the soy sauce, give it a good mix and just let it cook until the beans have cooked and the water has reduced completely. It might take quite some time. I think mine took at least an hour or so, but just keep checking up on it and stirring it every once in a while. And after you allow the liquid to completely reduce, you should be left with something like this. It's gonna be nice and salty and sweet, and it's a really great side dish. You can eat it with rice as well, and you can store it in the fridge for quite some time because it's nice and salty and sweet. So just keep it in a tightly sealed container in the fridge, and it's a nice little side dish. I like to also top mine with some sesame seeds, and that's pretty much it. So there is a simple three ingredient Korean side dish, braised black beans. complete our lunchbox, we need a vegan fried egg. So I'm gonna make one. So we have this um, thing going, is it on? Yes, okay. So we're gonna add some oil. Okay, we wanna do plenty of oil. You know what, I'm gonna make two, so let's use even more. We're gonna coat the whole thing with a shallow layer of oil and let this heat up a little bit. For the egg white portion, I'm gonna just use a medium firm tofu, okay? So 
Medium firm, I find is better to kind of imitate eggs rather than like extra firm or firm because it's kind of like nice and soft on the inside and it gets nice and crispy on the outside. And we're also gonna be making like an egg yolk type of situation, which I haven't tried. I'm actually using a recipe from my friend Mary from Mary's Test Kitchen. She has like a vegan fried egg recipe. So I'm gonna try her like yolk recipe, which I'm excited to try. All right guys, so I think it's pretty well heated. So now I'm just gonna place my medium firm tofu. Be careful not to break it. Oh, I want it to sizzle. Come on, where's the sizzle? I think it needs to be a little bit hotter, guys. It doesn't matter. You know what? It's gonna cook, okay? It's gonna start sizzling. The trick to tofu is to be patient, okay? You wanna let it sit in the oil, let it cook for a few minutes, and then you wanna flip over so that it's gonna be nice and golden. So I'm just gonna let this cook. While we're gonna let this cook, we're gonna make the egg yolk. Let's try Mary's recipe. Do you hear that sound? It's sizzling. Ooh, ooh. We're gonna make the egg yolk. Mary says uh, we need a quarter cup of water. All right, let's add that in to this bowl. I have a piece of hair here, that's fantastic. <laughs> there we go. So we have a quarter cup of water. Ooh, I like the sizzling sound. So what we wanna do is add some turmeric. So turmeric is for the yellow color of the yolk. She says one eighth of a teaspoon, so I'm just gonna add a very small amount, okay? And then we're also gonna do one teaspoon of cornstarch. Now I have potato starch. I either use cornstarch or potato starch. I feel like they do the same thing. So we're gonna do one teaspoon. That's half a teaspoon. One. And then we're gonna whisk it until there's no lumps. Ooh, look at that. Heat in the microwave for 15 seconds and then you wanna stir it and then heat again for another 15 seconds until it's bubbly. Now let's heat this up, 15 second intervals, okay? Stir, stir, stir. <laughs> How's that looking? Fabulous. All right guys, so we have this yolk situation. Now before I get into that, I'm gonna try to flip this. Ooh, look at that guys, look at that. So again, we're gonna cook this for a while, let it become nice and crispy, okay? So next, into the yolk. Look how thick it is, guys. It kinda looks yolky, you know? So Mary says to add in around a teaspoon. Vegan mayo or vegan butter, she said. So I'm just gonna use vegan mayo. We're gonna add that. And we're also gonna add black salt. So black salt is the magic ingredient, guys. This is called Kalanamak, and it basically makes everything taste like egg. Okay, so we're gonna add a little bit of that in here. It has that like sulfuric taste, okay? So if you're looking for that sulfur taste, add in some black salt. Whew, already smells very eggy. There's our yolk, maybe I'll try it. Ooh, interesting. Oh, wow. It's quite yolky. We're gonna also add some of this onto our egg white situation, so our tofu. I've done this before, I do this a lot actually. It's one of my favorite ways of making like a vegan egg, like really simple, really easy. Just a tiny bit of the black salt and then it really gives it that kind of egg, like you almost have a fried egg sort of situation. Ooh, look at that guys, look at that. I'm just gonna add a little bit more salt into the egg yolk. Just regular salt, just to add a little more flavor. Wow, look at that though. I mean, come on, it at least looks like egg yolk, right? Like, don't you wanna dip some like toast into this or something? I'm just gonna have a look. Ooh, I think it's pretty much done, you guys. And once the tofu was done, I just took a spoon and spooned on that vegan yolk. And there you have a really simple vegan fried egg. I know. Ooh, look at that. I'm impressed with myself. All right, you guys, so now it is time to put our lunchbox together. I'm so excited. It's gonna be so cute. So we have some brown rice here now. They use, I think it's white rice, but I have brown rice. Okay, we're gonna have to deal with that. So on the side here, they add some banchan. So banchan is Korean side dishes. Koreans are really big on our side dishes. We often have a bunch of side dishes already in our fridge, just ready to eat. So as you guys have seen, I made this black bean banchan. Oh my God, it looks so good. This is a really, really great thing to have in the fridge to again, have with rice, have as a side dish and it's nice and salty and sweet and it's delicious. So we're gonna add some of this into the side as they do in Squid Game. 
And this is why I like variety, guys, because I grew up, you know, as a Korean eating so many different side dishes with every meal. So I can't really do just like, you know, one type of food for a meal. You know, I need to have like 15 different side dishes, okay? And then on the side here, we're also gonna add some kimchi, which is of course the traditional Korean dish. This is pickled cabbage, fermented cabbage. This is my mom's vegan kimchi. If you guys haven't tried my mom's vegan kimchi recipe, it'll be linked down below. It is so good. And I'm gonna add that on the side as well. So in Korea, they call lunch boxes doshirak, doshirak. So this is like a very traditional type of doshirak. And um, it reminds me of my childhood, okay? And then let's add our special vegan fried egg. Mm. I mean, look at that. I mean, which one should I add? I mean, this one looks good. They both look good actually. Okay. Ooh. Oh, you guys, I mean, I mean, guys. Is this not perfect? Okay. This is the vegan version of the doshirak from Squid Game. Oh my God, I can't wait to eat it. But you know what I'm gonna eat it with? Something else from Squid Game. Let me show you. So I just found a random um, vegan friendly cup noodle. This one is Jin Ramen, which is just another one of those ramen brands in Korea. There's probably like a million right now. So I'm just gonna make some cup noodles because I feel like this combination, my friends, oh, it is. A, the perfect combination, okay? Let me know if you actually remember all the scenes where all this food is being eaten um, Because I feel like some of it just kind of like happens in passing So the cup noodle scene is when they get out of the game for the first time, right? So Sangwoo and Ali, they get out of the game and then they get dropped off in the same location And then they go to a convenience store and then they're eating cup noodles together Mm-hmm. Because in Korea, convenience stores actually have like hot water and stuff like that So you can actually make Actually, I think convenience stores here might also, but um, so you can actually like make the cup noodles in the store and just eat it in the store, which is what they do, okay? So I'm just gonna let this sit, okay? And while we let this sit, we're gonna eat this doshira! Yay, I'm so excited! Let's try this egg and this rice. Oh my God, you guys. Mm. Mm hmm. Guys, this fried egg is actually legit. The yolk recipe, I think is one of the most realistic vegan yolk recipes I've ever tried. And the crazy thing is it's actually so simple. My friends, this is so good. Black beans are a really good addition because it just kind of like it adds like a nice salty element to this dish. Otherwise, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit plain, but the kimchi and the black beans, perfect combination. Try this out, you guys. I wanna see you guys making your vegan version of this and taking some photos. Take me on Instagram, I wanna see because I'm very proud of my little doshirak, okay? Make your own, guys. You can make a vegan version, it's gonna be delicious. So now, let's dig into the cup noodles. I mean, let's face it, guys. I know what cup noodles taste like. I just wanted to eat some, okay? Although that scene, when they eat it, it's like so depressing, so it didn't even look that good. I feel like this combination, mm, it's golden. Ooh, cup noodles. You wanna learn a Korean way of eating cup noodles? Take the lid, fold it once, fold it again, then you make a little pocket, like so. And then this is how you cool down the noodles before you eat them. If it's too hot, put them here. Look at that! And then you just eat it out of this little. Mm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell I'm hungry? Oh my God, this food is so good. Alright you guys, so the next thing we're going to make, many of you might have missed it or you don't remember, but there's like a part where the main character is like, hi, I can't drink regular milk, can I get some chocolate milk? And then he also gets a piece of bread, like a pastry with it, and I was like, let's make that vegan, okay? So apparently this pastry is called soboropang, soboropang. 
Bang is bread in Korean, okay? It looks like a very standard sort of pastry that I remember eating like when I was a child from like the Korean bakery. So I really wanted to try a vegan version and I found a video with a vegan recipe. So I'm gonna follow that recipe. I'll link that recipe video down below. By the way, if I follow any recipes in this video, all the links will be down below. I'm gonna try this out. I'll let you know how it is. So let's get started. So first we have some warm soy milk here. So this is 200 grams or 200 milliliters of warm soy milk. We're gonna add in sugar, 37 grams of sugar, very specific. So we're gonna add that into the uh, warm milk. And then we're also gonna add in some active dry yeast. So this is four grams of active dry yeast. We're gonna add that in. I'm gonna mix this, mix this, and we're gonna let it sit for a few minutes for the yeast to activate, my friends. And then we are going to prepare the flour. So this is 300 grams of white flour. Into the flour, we're gonna add in three grams of salt. Beautiful. So after we add the salt and the flour together, we're just gonna whisk it together. And then just a few more minutes for the yeast to activate. So we are now going to combine the disgusting active yeast. Is it just me or like, is yeast kind of gross? I don't know. Like it just looks kind of, you know, it's like a creature anyways. So it looks like it's active though. It's all bubbly and you know, smells kind of like beer. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna mix it a little bit. And then we're gonna add this yeast mixture into the flour. Ooh. Oh my gosh. And then we're just gonna combine. So we mixed it, smelling nice and yeasty. Now I'm gonna add in the vegan butter. This is 30 grams of vegan butter, room temp, okay? That's what we're going for. So we're gonna mix that. The thing is, this person, she uses a an electric kneading thing device. I don't have an electric kneading device. So I'm just gonna knead it with my hands. And y'all, Lord knows how bad I am at kneading things. So should we go to the counter? Okay. So the original video says to knead this for 10 minutes until the dough is smooth and elastic. Honestly, I just did this for probably less than five minutes because I have no patience. After that, you wanna put the dough ball back into the bowl, then cover it up and let it sit for one to two hours. And you wanna let the dough rise to about two to three times its original size. Cover it up and then let it rise for, for an hour to two hours. We're gonna do an hour, let's be honest. I'm gonna let it sit kind of in the sun. Done! All right, guys, so while we're waiting for the bread to rise, we're gonna create the topping, and the topping looks really good. So we have here some vegan butter, 35 grams of room temperature vegan butter. We have 30 grams of peanut butter, and we're gonna mix this together, okay? Oh. I already know it's gonna be delicious. And then we're gonna add in some vanilla extract, half a teaspoon vanilla extract. And then we're also gonna add in 40 grams of sugar. Okay, mix this again. Now we have some flour again, okay? So we have regular flour, we have 70 grams of plain flour. We're gonna add that. We're also gonna add in 30 grams of almond flour. And then we have half a teaspoon baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Let's add that. And then basically you just wanna mix this and then it becomes like a crumble. I hope this tastes like my childhood. I just remember like going to the bakeries in Korea and they have so many pastries like this with like a crumble on top. Now we have the crumble ready. Now we just have to wait for the bread to rise and then we can finish up this pastry. Once the dough has risen, you can put it on a floured surface and then roll it up into a long piece and then you want to divide it into eight different pieces. Then you want to shape each piece into a round ball, cover and let it rise again for another 15 minutes. And after that, apparently you want to flatten each ball just a bit just to let the gas out and then reshape into another round shape. And then dip each piece into some room temperature water. Dip it in our crumble that we made. And then you want to like flatten it with your palm and just let all that crumble stick onto that dough. And then repeat this with each piece. And if there was any leftover crumble, I just added more onto each piece. And I also put some on the bottom of each dough ball as well. And then you want to cover it again and let the dough rise for another hour, which let's face it, I waited less than that. <laughs> anyway. 
So you just want to let it rise a bit more and then I baked it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes and now you're done. Time to taste test. So the soboro bang, soboro bang, soboro bread is done. Oh my god, it smells like my childhood. Like literally, I walked into a Korean bakery. It smells so good. I'm so excited to dig in. It looks, they look so cute too. Look at them guys. Oh my god. Now I really hope they taste just as good. But in the show, if you guys remember, they had their little pastry bread with some milk. Now I don't know if it was regular milk, but of course I'm having soy milk. Oh my lord. Ooh. Oh my god. I'm so excited. Moment of truth. I'm gonna try one of these bad boys. <gasps> I mean, I think I'm just gonna take a big bite. Cheers. <gasps> oh my god. It is so nice and fluffy in the inside. I'm actually shook. Mm. This and soy milk, perfect combination. The inside is so nice and soft and fluffy. Mm. Mm. The outside is nice and crumbly and sweet and delicious. Slight peanut butter taste. You guys, this might be the best thing ever. Highly recommend this recipe. I'm gonna link the original recipe down below. It's worth this, like, all this time and, you know, effort. It's actually worth it. It's so good. Oh my God, I need to have one more bite. You have to see the inside. I'll show you guys the inside. Mm. Mm. There are no words. Try this. <laughs> I'm shook. I'm actually shook. Like I can't stop eating this. Look, look at the inside. The bread is so soft. Alright you guys, so now this is the probably the most famous thing on the show, which is the honeycomb, aka taigona. So taigona candy apparently is like a traditional thing. My parents told me that like outside their school they would have someone like making this and then you're supposed to like make it into the shapes and if you break it, you're supposed to eat it. You eat it and then that's it. But if you like make the shape, then they actually give you another one. <laughs> That's what my parents told me, but it's basically just sugar and baking soda. So I haven't tried making this I'm actually really nervous. I feel like it's kind of hard I feel like I'm gonna mess up, but let's let's hope not we got some sugar now I'm not gonna measure it. I feel like I don't know people are not measuring it. Maybe I should measure it. Oh, well Let's just try okay So apparently you're supposed to just stir this on the heat um, on a pan and just kind of let it like melt You just have to be careful to not let it burn which is why you're like stirring it the whole time. Oh god Why am I nervous? Meanwhile, make sure you have your cookie cutters ready, okay? I just got these at the dollar store, you know what I'm saying? This game, you guys, gave me so much anxiety. I think this, to me, was the most anxiety-inducing game of all because it was, like, the second game, and I wasn't, like, fully prepared for what, what was about to come, and I wasn't ready for, like, people to just get shot and stuff, okay? I'm sorry if that was a spoiler, okay? But once again, if you haven't watched it yet, I'm sorry. I can't help you, okay? Let me know down below if you guys have tried making this. <laughs> I feel like everyone's trying to make this right now. Everyone's like, can I, can I pass this game? Anyways, let me know guys. Also, who's your favorite character on Squid Game? I think mine is, don't judge me guys. Mine is Sangu. you know the guy, the, the really smart guy that went to Seoul University? That might be my favorite because he's just, people hate him, but people say that he's the most realistic character. I just feel like Sangu is just such a good character because he like represents a very interesting dynamic in Korean society. You know, somebody that's really well educated, but A is kind of miserable, also let his like greed get to him and he loses everything. I mean, there's just so much and a lot of people love to hate him, but also like, to be honest, he's just playing the game, you know? What are you supposed to do? Anyway, oh my God, guys, it's starting to melt. <gasps> so it's starting to crumble a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of, ooh, it's happening. It's happening. It's starting to turn like nice and brown, but is this even enough? Like this looks like a very small amount. So basically you're gonna let this come to a liquid Consistency. I think I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit or turn it off because the heat the residual heat is strong So it's still a little bit clumpy, but it's starting to really Melt. Oh my god. I wonder if I can do this the first time like the first try Oh, okay guys. I think I think we're ready for the Look at that. So when it's pretty much done apparently you want to add in 
a pinch of baking soda. I don't know what the, whoa. Ah! Does the baking soda like solidify it or something? Oh my gosh. So we're gonna pour it. Ah! Okay, apparently I can make a few. It expands it. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the bottom of this. I don't know if I need to put some baking soda on it. Oh my god, I think I ruined it, guys. How do you do this? The hell with the mother? Do I need to wait for it to like cool before I do this? My friends. Um, this one looks okay. These ones are not good. Not good. Oh, I need to do this. Ooh! Okay. Maybe, maybe. Ah! No! Okay, this one's ruined, guys. That is just. No. What the? Why is it so stringy? Yum. This is just... Anyway. Ooh! Okay, what did I do wrong, guys? Someone tell me. Yum. It tastes good. guys so I already kind of broke off a piece I think I made it a little too thin so I feel like it's gonna be a little easy I don't I mean I say this now but um but imagine like doing this when you're like oh look see imagine doing this when you're like you know people are like getting shot beside you like I would be so nervous oh my gosh Ooh. Ah! I made it I kind of cheated though that was like a little bit too easy but here here's the heart cheers mmm this one might be harder. Let's see. Actually, no, it's easy. Guys, I would pass this game with flying colors. No, probably not. Yay! So that's the tag on the game. I don't know if I made it properly, guys, but there it is. All right, friends. So the next one I'm going to be making is something you guys have seen before, which is tteokbokki. In the first episode, I believe, when Toksu, is that his name, Toksu? Main character guy. If you guys remember, the main character guy who's a terrible father, <laughs> he gambles away his uh, daughter's, you know, present money and, and dinner money for her birthday. And um, he ends up with very little money because he loses it all, okay? He takes her to what Koreans called pojang matcha, which is like those like outside like food, Place. It's like street food, but you can like sit down and eat it. So they're in Pojang Mata and they eat Tteokbokki. Tteokbokki is a very popular Korean street food. I've made so many versions of Tteokbokki on my channel. So I'm just going to show you a very basic version here in this video. Because I mean, I have to make Tteokbokki. They eat it, they call it junk food, which I have a problem with. It is not junk food, okay? It is not junk food. Anyway, we're going to make Tteokbokki. It is spicy Korean rice cakes for those of you that don't know. If you haven't tried it, please, please. Try it. Let me show you a very easy version. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add some water. Woo! I'm gonna add two cups of water into this big wok here. You can always add more water. So start out with, you know, two cups. And if you need to add more, you can add more. I like to make like a kelp broth. So you can either boil some kelp, like dry kelp, which Koreans call tashima. We can boil that, you know, boil that for like 20 minutes and let the kelp flavor soak into the water. Or you could be like me and be lazy and just add a little bit of kelp powder. Don't tell my mama, she does not approve of this. I'm just gonna add a tiny amount, about a quarter teaspoon of kelp powder. This part is totally optional, but I feel like it adds more depth to the flavor of the broth. And then we're gonna add in some cabbage. I just have some white cabbage, about two cups of white cabbage. Tteokbokki is actually really easy to make. You just kinda like put things into a pot and just let it come to a boil. We have half an onion sliced up into thin slices. Add that as well. And then we have a bunch of things here, okay? So we gotta flavor this deliciousness. So we have three tablespoons of gochujang, which is Korean red chili pepper paste. One tablespoon of gochugaru, which is Korean red chili pepper flakes or powder. So if you don't have the gochugaru, you can actually just use a little bit more gochujang if you want, um, or just skip it. It just adds a little bit more like flavor, a little bit more spice. We also have some sugar. Now you can use maple syrup, agave nectar. I can't find my maple syrup. Instead of maple syrup, I'm just going to use sugar. There are two tablespoons of sugar and I also have about three cloves of garlic minced. So we're going to add this all in. 
We're also gonna add in two tablespoons of soy sauce. And let's just mix this. Can we talk about how bad of a father the main character is though? <laughs> oh God, seriously. I mean, you have to watch the end. I won't tell you what happens at the end, but like he's kind of a bad father like throughout the whole thing. I feel like they really like up the main character and make him seem like a really nice guy. But then the more you watch it, you're like, okay, you're kind of like, maybe he's just a big mess. Who knows? Okay. But he does some shady things in the series. You know, it's not all Sangwoo that's bad. Okay. Anyways, by the way, me and Daniel, we're going to talk about this show, Squid Game, on our October Patreon exclusive episode of our podcast. If you guys don't follow our podcast, it's called The Savage Podcast, and we just kind of talk about trending topics and all kinds of things, and we actually have a Patreon page where we do like exclusive content. We do an exclusive episode every single month on Patreon, so I think for October, we're going to talk about Squid Game. So if you want to join us in that conversation, link is down below to our Patreon. You can join for as little as $3 a day. Okay. Well, now it looks like it's mixed pretty well. Ooh. Ooh, yum. So now I'm going to add, of course, the star of the show, which is the. This is the, which is Korean rice cakes. If you have frozen rice cakes, you want to separate them first by um, soaking them in a bit of cold water before um, you throw them in. Okay. So we're just going to throw this in. This is about one pound of rice cakes. Okay. And then... Let's just bring this to a nice boil and just let it cook basically until the sauce thickens because the starch from the rice cakes will release into the sauce and then it's gonna thicken up and then the rice cakes are gonna get really chewy and delicious. And this is a really, really popular Korean street food. If you know anything about Korean cuisine, you've heard of tteokbokki, you've probably had it before and it is just one of the best dishes ever. Okay, let's wait for this to come to a boil. All right, guys, so while our tteokbokki is cooking, okay, it's cooking very nicely, as I can see here. While this is cooking, we're gonna make the dry ramen snack. So if you guys remember, after they get out of the game the first time, the main character, what's his name? Ki-hoon. Ki-hoon, got it. So the main character, Ki-hoon, he goes to like this convenience store. He picks up some like soju. Oh, I should have got some soju. He picks up some like soju, like a bottle of soju. And then he ends up running into the old man. His name is Ilan, okay? And then they're like sitting, chatting, and then they're like drinking their soju. And one thing that you should know about Korean people, we cannot drink on an empty stomach. Like we don't drink without food. Like you have to have food when you drink. Okay, there's actually a term for it. It's called anju. So anju is like the food that you eat when you drink alcohol. <laughs> yes, that is a thing. In Korea, everyone has to eat something when they drink. Okay, that's like a thing. So they're like, oh my God, we have nothing to eat. What are we gonna do? And then one of the, I can't remember who, but one of them takes out a bag of ramen. In here is a block of dry ramen, right? So you're supposed to cook it and make it into noodles. But another way you could enjoy it is like just dry and then you make it into like a crunchy snack. So first you can like, Crush it. Yay. So this one is Samyang ramen. This one is vegan friendly. I checked. Always check your ramen to see if it's vegan friendly. I haven't done this since literally I was a child. So, so crush it and then you open it up and now your ramen will be crushed. And I'm just gonna not use the flakes. So this is the vegetable flake. Maybe I'll put it in here actually. But you wanna take the seasoning packet, okay? This is a seasoning packet, and you wanna throw this in here. Now, I don't know if you wanna add it all. It might be a little bit too salty. And then, you're gonna just kinda of shake it, shake it up. Shake it. Okay, let's have a piece now. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Again, you can add more seasonings if you want. Let me try it. Mmm. <laughs> Tastes like my childhood. Oh my God. Mmm. It's nice and crunchy. Actually, this would be a really good anju because it's like kind of salty, crunchy, satisfying. Mm. I mean, I still prefer like actual noodles, but still a good snack. Mm. In the show, you see them drinking some Sprite with their boiled egg. I'm obviously not gonna do a vegan version of boiled egg. Like I don't even, I mean, who even wants to eat boiled eggs? Anyways, but there's like that scene where they give the players a green bottle, which is the Sprite, and then a boiled egg, okay? That's actually a Korean drink. It's actually called Saida. I'm sure maybe it's the same recipe as Sprite. I don't know. But in Korea, we call it Saida, and it comes in like a nice green bottle. And look, this Canada Dry Ginger Ale, <laughs> similar bottle, okay? So I thought, hey, this could be, you know, 
Let's just pretend this is how you thought. Let's open it up. Look at this. I love the old school like bottles too. Let's pretend this is how you thought. Oh, I forgot how good ginger ale is. This is a good combination. Mm-hmm. This is great. You see, the soup has thickened up quite significantly. Okay, and the rice cakes I can feel have, have softened. Let me just. Mm hmm. Now, the thing with dokoke, guys, I feel like the longer you let it cook, the more the flavors like, get married and stuff. It's delicious. I actually like dokoke better the next day because I feel like the flavors have like really soaked. The rice cakes are like really soft and they're really chewy and delicious. I mean, some people might not like it the next day. They think it's a little bit too soggy, but oh, I love it the next day. Anyway, so one thing you could do, you guys. <laughs> I mean, if you're eating this combination, here's an option. So, Koreans, we also like to put ramen in our tteokbokki. We call it rabokki, okay? Rabokki. So, I'm not gonna use all of this, but let's add a little bit into the soup. And then what this is gonna do is also thicken up the sauce a little bit more. Ooh, because the, the ramen is gonna soak up some of that sauce. And then what I'm also gonna do is let's not let the flakes go to waste, the ramen flakes. By the way, this part is totally optional. You don't have to do this part, but I thought, hey, I opened up a package of ramen. It's only natural for me to add it into the tteokbokki, letting this really thicken up. And then I think it's pretty much ready. And I'm gonna add in another really important thing, which is green onion. So I've got two stalks of green onion here. I'm just gonna add most of the green onion here. And I'm gonna save a little bit for topping. So, oof. Ooh, look at that, you guys. This is Korean street food made in your kitchen, my friends. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna put it into a plate. Oh! I always find tteokbokki looks so satisfying, delicious. Mm, yum. Look at all that sauce. All right, now what I like to do is top with a few more pieces of green onion, just for that color. And then I also like to top with some sesame seeds. A little too much. That was a lot. You don't need that much. Let me just um, let me just mix it here. There you go. There is the finished product. Tteokbokki! Yay! We're gonna have to try this tteokbokki, of course, but it looks pretty fantastic if i may say so myself Ooh, don't let anyone tell you this is junk food okay do not that is offensive to koreans <sighs> mm, here's the bite of tteokbokki mm, that is perfection okay perfection make this mm. it's so nice and chewy the sauce is nicely soaked into the rice cakes. It's nice and thick, the sauce. You get the nice crunch from the onions and the cabbage. It is spicy, but not like crazy. Oh my God, you guys, it's so good. Seriously, if you haven't tried tteokbokki yet, what are you doing? Okay, to be honest though, it is a little bit spicy. It's kinda, it's a bit spicy, okay. That was my Squid Game recipes video. Once again, all of the written recipes and stuff, I'll put it in a blog post if you guys are interested. And of course, all of the different sources where I got some of these recipes, I'll link them down below as well. I really hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun and a lot of food. It was like a lot more food than I thought it was. I don't know. Anyways, um, it was so much fun. I hope you guys watched the show. Oh my God, can you please watch it? Can you please? Can we talk about this show? It's crazy. Make sure you guys join our Patreon page for it this Saturday podcast so that you can listen to us discuss this craziness of the show we're gonna go deep into it analyze every little thing talk about all the metaphors and all the craziness that happens so if you guys want to listen to us talk about that again the patreon link will be down below and listen to our podcast okay anyways thank you so much for watching make sure you subscribe if you haven't already let me know your thoughts down below did you watch the show what did you think let me know all of that and of course give this video a big thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video bye